Okay, so you want to move from Photoshop to Krita, or you want to save yourself some money and start learning a free and open source software instead of paying $600 a year, or whatever it is now for Adobe, or there's just stuff in Photoshop that you'd like it to do that it doesn't do. So um, I'm going to take you through some of the basic things of Krita, which is a free and open source software. And the first thing that you want to do if you're moving from Adobe to Krita is to set up Krita so it's like Adobe. How do I not have to learn a completely new piece of software and rearrange my brain into all of the shortcuts and stuff? So the first thing that you want to do is you want to go to settings and you want to go to configure toolbars. Okay. And then I'm going to come in here and I'm going to type in config. Okay, and we'll find configure Krita, we'll move it over here and we'll click apply and we'll click okay. That puts this little icon right up in here. And when I click on that, I can do all sorts of different things, but down here under shortcut schemes is the most important one. And I wanna change this from default to Photoshop compatible. And what that will do is that will make it so that most or all of the shortcuts that are available from Photoshop uh, will be mapped onto the keyboard for Krita. I'm gonna click okay, right? And so now when I, when I zoom in, zoom out, do all that stuff, I can switch to uh, the brush, I can switch to the move tool, like all of those different things are what you would expect them to be, right? And since today we're using this assistant tool and the assistant tool doesn't exist in Photoshop, which is one of the reasons why you might be switching to Krita or adding Krita to your arsenal, um, but it doesn't have a keystroke. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on this button up here um, to configure Krita again, and I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna start typing in assist. Um, and you'll see right down here, assistant tool, and it's gonna say default, none, custom. And so I'm gonna click custom here. And then I'm gonna put in shift A. You can put in whatever you want, but shift A doesn't have anything assigned to it. And now when I click shift A, then it activates that, right? So I can switch back and forth between my brush and my assistant tool, uh, which we'll be doing a lot today. Okay, that's step one. Okay, so now we've got our keystrokes ready. We're good to go. So next up, we've got brushes, and you can see down here in your brush panel, and if you don't see any of these panels over here, instead of going to window like you would in Photoshop, you're gonna go to settings, and then you're gonna go to dockers. These are called dockers, okay? And so we're gonna be looking at brush presets here, and you can jump into that. And then you've got all of these different brush presets. We're not gonna go into this too much, but you can go into inking and you've got a bunch of inking ones. You can favorite them. It's important to understand the basics of this because we're gonna be switching back and forth between the brush tool and the assistant tool. So you gotta get an O, B, or you can just click right over here. So those are the brushes. Two quick things to note about the brush tool. First is you wanna have snap to assistant on where it won't lock to the assistants that we'll be talking about today. The second one is there is no eraser tool. There is just a button on every brush that you can turn it into an eraser. So I can come in here, right? And I can kind of like draw and then I can hit this eraser and it'll take that brush and it'll turn it into an eraser. And sometimes you'll be trying to like figure something out and you're like, why isn't this drawing? It's because you accidentally hit E or put the eraser tool on. Let's talk about mirroring. Mirroring is something that Adobe Photoshop just barely picked up, but Krita has had it. And so I'm gonna come in here like this and I'm gonna draw, right? That's, that's pretty basic. Uh, let's switch to blue here. And if I turn on this mirroring, then as I draw, you'll see that it whatever happens on one side is mirrored on the other side. So if you're drawing something symmetrical, for example, if you come in and you wanna kind of like sketch out like a, like a skull situation here, which is something that I do a lot of, then you know I can just draw symmetrically like this and it'll kind of mirror it for me. You can also do vertical, so it'll, it'll mirror across a horizontal axis. If you draw something down here, it'll draw up there, mirrors it vertically. Or you can do them both where you draw and it's gonna flip across those axes, right? They also move and so you can kind of relocate them to wherever you want them to be. And if you click on this, you can hide them, you can lock them, and you can move them back to center. These will also be very useful over here when we're doing any of these assistants or drawing aids. You can also use the mirroring and the drawing aids. So that is mirror. Now let's jump into the assistant tools. 
They're just basic drawing aids like you might see in a lot of different programs except in Photoshop. So you've got all of these different things. And if we just come right over here, if you followed along so far, you can just press Shift A and that'll get you there. Come over here under Tool Options and you have all of these different things. We're gonna go through each one. And so you can jump through the chapters of this video if you wanna learn one or the other. But the basic idea is we can come in here and we can click and click and click and it gives us this little guide. And if we switch back over to our brush, then we draw along that guide, right? And I can change colors, okay? And it'll draw different things, okay? I can jump back over to this tool and I can even change the opacity uh, of the tool itself or I can change the color of that tool. And so if if it's getting in the way, you can kind of like drop the opacity down. I'm gonna leave it, I'm gonna leave it right about here so we can still see stuff. You can come in and every time you switch to that tool, you can readjust this. This little guy right here, he moves this assistant around. This will hide and show that assistant. This will lock the assistant. This will move this little widget out of the way. And when you're done using this assistant, this will trash it. You can save or load assistance. If you've got a drawing that you're working on and you have you know, some ellipses in perspective that are in a very specific place and you wanna be able to continue to kind of work with those, paint them, draw them, ink them, whatever, you can save them uh, and then you can reload those later. Let's get into it. You've got the ruler, very basic. Click, click, right? You've got a ruler. You can have multiple rulers, click, click and you can set up as many as you want, just like any of the other guides. Uh, but then when you jump on, you kind of just draw and it'll just constrain itself to that ruler, right? To that line. Unlike the infinite ruler, once you get to the end, it, it just stops, right? So you just can't draw past the end. Infinite ruler, okay? Um, now infinite ruler here, you're basically not constrained to the edges of this ruler. It just, you can draw anywhere, right? And so you'll notice that I kind of did that, right? And it just, it goes past the edges. That's what it means. I like it better than the ruler, unless you're trying to constrain your drawing to a specific thing. Parallel ruler. Parallel ruler is extremely useful. Okay, let's, let's say that I've got a situation like this, okay? But I want all of my lines to be parallel to that line, like speed lines or something. I can come in here like this. If I switch it up to a speed line brush, I could kind of come in and, you know, kind of do some of this action. Right, I could switch over to my eraser and knock some of this back. And it's all gonna be kind of lined up parallel to this. Let's say that you wanted to like ink some panel borders here in your comic, right? Then you could come in and this is like one of those rolling inking guides, parallel rulers. The ellipse tool. Ellipse is pretty basic. You're gonna two clicks and then a third click is gonna give you that. This one, it just locks it directly to that. So that's ellipse. Pretty straightforward, right? Three clicks will get you your ellipse. Um, and then after the fact, you can come in and you can adjust these controls um, that'll kind of do that, move it around, those types of things, right? So the next one is concentric ellipse. Okay, and concentric ellipse <clears throat> is like if you wanna draw something, uh, but you wanna continue to come out. So maybe you wanna do like a, like a record player or something like that, right? Instead of freehanding it, I'm going to come into this tool and we're gonna choose concentric ellipse. I'm going to click. Um, I'm gonna click again, that gives us our circle. And then our third click is gonna give us uh, kind of the, the width or the angle or the perspective of that ellipse. Now, if you hold shift, it'll lock it into a complete circle for you, right? Um, so it, shift is gonna give you kind of that, uh, that deal where you're, you're gonna get it constrained, just like in Photoshop. So I'm gonna say something like this, right? Okay, and then when I switch over to, you'll notice in my brush tool now that I have this, and wherever I put my brush, it's giving me some sort of version of that. So I can draw, I can draw right on the ellipse like that, but I can also come just inside of it. I can come just inside, just inside, just inside, just inside, right? And it's giving me these concentric circle guides that are always locked into this one thing, okay? Then I can jump back over to here, I can move this, and if you hold shift, it'll lock that into proportion, so I can come down like this, right? 
And then I can jump back over and let's just, let's just grab this front edge here. Right. And I'm going to go jump back over and let's add a guide to this. So I'm just going to add a little ruler. Okay. And I'm going to go from here to here. Okay. And then I'm going to jump back to my brush. And with both of them, it, it kind of knows which one you want to use, right? Which is nice. Switch back to my tool, bring this over, line it up over here, switch back to my brush. Okay. Now it thinks I'm trying to go like that. So I can just command Z. It's going to come up here and come down. Then we go to perspective ellipse and this makes it really easy. You're going to click, click, click and click. And the, the thing that's a little bit different for this than what you might be thinking with the just ellipse tool itself is you can map this onto an existing square, right? It's going to, it's basically the tool that's going to give you that kind of ellipse and perspective. And so if I kind of hit it like this, however you want to draw, zoop, right? And kind of do those types of things. Um, very similar to the other ellipses, but it starts differently because you're putting it in perspective. So that's that's basically the perspective ellipse. Spline. The first click gives you your first point there. The second click gives you the end of your spline, the second point there. And then it's you're going to pick the handlebars point of that curve from your first point, click again, and then you'll pick the handlebars of that second point. And then when you jump over, it will follow that perfectly. So think of these like French curves, click, click, and then you'll pull the curve out wherever you want that to be, and then pull the other curve out wherever you want that to be, jump back over to your brush, and you ink a perfect smooth curve. And you can come in and kind of adjust these after the fact, just like the rest of them. Jump over to brush and ink. Vanishing point. This is one point perspective. And so single click wherever you want, jump over to your brush and every line will go directly to the center there like this, right? And so whatever you're doing is very nice. Okay, again, if you wanted to do some sort of, uh, some sort of speed lines here, and you want to add in mirroring, see, it'll kind of save you a little bit of time because it's it's mirroring whatever you're doing across those axes like this. You can get some very effective things. We can jump in with the eraser and pull some of that stuff out, right? But it's all going towards the center. Two-point perspective. Okay, so in two-point perspective, I'm not, this isn't going to be a perspective tutorial. I'm just going to show you kind of how this works. Um, so if you don't understand perspective, that's a different video. But basically, uh, you jump over here, two-point perspective. And we are going to come in and we are going to click and then click and wherever you click, that's going to give you your first and second vanishing points. You can you can change them. Right. Um, if you want to if you want to zoom out, you can kind of zoom out and you can put them way off the screen if you want. When we switch over to our brush, you'll see that our brush now has these uh, axes that are kind of following it and you can draw on a vertical axis like this it'll go, it'll go up and down or it'll diminish to one of those things and so if I come in here like this and I kind of do this action the basic idea is as you start it tries to guess which axis line that you're going to be drawing on very very useful uh, for drawing things in perspective perspective. And what this is, it's just basically going to give you uh, some sort of vanishing perspective. And then everything will kind of work on that plane. So it just gives you a 2D plane in perspective to kind of deal with there. Okay, so fisheye, which is basically four point perspective. And uh, it's pretty straightforward. So it, it works much like the concentric ellipse tool does, um, but it's going to lock things into you know, whatever depth or shape you do this globe. If you move to the outside, it'll kind of flip. Once you get to the middle there, it kind of flips sides, right? So that's that's pretty much it. Uh, and then the other thing is you can, you can come in and you can uh, readjust these to make them different. Uh, yeah, that's, that's fisheye. Uh, hopefully this is helpful. If it was helpful, then go check out my comic at coreykerr.com slash rage. 
And you can see how I'm using a lot of this, especially in the most recent panel that I've drawn with um, some of those vanishing points and some of those types of things. So hopefully that was helpful. Uh, like and subscribe and all that jazz. And thanks for everything. Comment with other things that you'd like to see from Krita as I kind of learn this. And we will catch you guys next time. Go make stuff.